This meeting is being recorded. Hi, everyone. Welcome, welcome. WSET Bite Sized Edition. My name is Bonnie Buchanan. I am head of global accounts for the WSET. And today we're going to be talking about Carmen Air. Um, for those of you that aren't familiar, WSET is one of the leading providers of qualifications in wine, spirits, and sake. Uh, we do qualifications in over 70 different countries. We've got more than 800 course providers. Um, if you need anything from us, you can find us at WSETglobal.com. Um, this is a recorded session. So it will be available to watch via the Global Events Hub on YouTube. Also, if you have any questions, please pop them in the Q&A box and we will do our best to answer all questions at the end. If we miss any, uh, we can uh, do our best to be in touch. And so with all of those notes out of the way, I want to take an opportunity to introduce our speaker. Um, we're, today we're talking to Pedro Rodriguez, which I just said very horribly. I'm so sorry, Pedro. Um, he is the co-founder and CEO of Gran Cata, which is a really, really wonderful wine shop here in Washington, D.C., uh, with a Latin American focus. And that is why he is talking to us today about this wonderful grape Carbonara. Uh, Pedro comes from a wonderful background studying uh, you know, overseas in Barcelona, coming from his native Puerto Rico. And uh, he is gonna talk to us about this wonderful grape. He holds his advanced certified WSET degree. And from here, I'm gonna let him take it off. Over to you, Pedro. Thank you very much, Bonnie. And uh, good afternoon, good evening. Uh, good morning, everyone. Uh, it's a pleasure to be part of the WCT webinar, uh, talking about one of our favorite varieties here in in um, in, uh, in our shop in Gran Cata, Cata Mistakes, as you know. So we uh, we confounded the uh, company in 2011 with Julio. He's actually from Chile, and uh, we want to just be Latin America ambassador of the wine culture here in the in the, in the nation's capital of uh, in the United States. So. We've been uh, with our brick and mortar since 2016. We have two locations. So if you're in the in the area, make sure you visit us. So Carmen is a variety that is, is dear to our hearts because of the rich history it has. Um, we are uh, definitely embracing it, making people, uh, making sure people know it, get to drink it, enjoy it with friends and family. And it's super unique to us because uh, it's, it's established and it's, made, it's marked in the, in the Chilean wine landscape. I'm sure a lot of folks have had uh, Chilean wine, but Carminari is, is a unique expression. It's like the Shinsher variety, the Lost Grape of Bordeaux. So uh, we're super happy to be able to showcase uh, kind of the uniqueness of the variety, but also to understand it better and to enjoy it better with all the delicious uh, cuisine from different parts of the world. So Carmenere, as uh, everybody knows, is uh, one of the Reno Bordeaux varieties that uh, got kind of disappeared from the wine landscape in uh, in France in the 19, uh, sorry, 1867, more or less, uh, due to the plague called Phylloxera. As you know, it's a microorganism that killed the rootstock. So when they were replanting and trying to uh, kind of make sure um, all these bars didn't go extinct. They thought that the uh, Carmenere went extinct. Um, uh, a super fun story about it. He made his voyage back to uh, to the Americas through Chile. And then in, it actually uh, stopped in uh, Northern Italy as well in the Veneto region. So it's uh, actually there's Italian Carmenere as well. But Chile accounts for more, most of the production nowadays. Uh, this is a variety, uh, as you know, it's connected to the Bordeaux grapes. So we're talking about Cabernet Sauvignon, uh, Cabernet Franc, Petit Bordeaux, Merlot, Malbec, and then Carmenere was the missing component. Um, and it got, um, you know, uh, rediscovered in Chile after many, many decades of enjoying it and thinking it was the sibling uh, Merlot. And a lot of people thought, oh, it's a spicy clone of the Merlot, you know, that occur in the vineyards. And then they, uh, people were drinking and enjoying it, but they never thought it was that lost grape of Bordeaux. So in, in, uh, it wasn't until 1994 um, that a French winemaker uh, went to Chile. And now with the technology and genetic testing, they uh, rediscovered the variety. So uh, that, that made, it made a shift towards, uh, you know, understanding variety that is different from the rest, has uh, definitely 
other ripening condition and it thrives in uh, warm weather and cold nights uh, with uh, you know specific typicity to uh, soils that are rich of minerals like decomposed granite soils and also a um, uh, little bit of clay soil. So you get like a good mix to have a good expression of the Carmenere variety. Uh, things that you find in Carmenere um, and that a lot of people either love or not uh, a fan of is uh, kind of the earthy, bell peppery. We also describe it as jalapeno on the nose that you get like the ounces and aromatics, super enticing. Uh, Carmenere needs, uh, uh, means carmine when it turns um, uh, the verasong, makes it turn, uh, the, the gray start to develop those colors of car, uh, carmine. And in Spanish, we call it carmine. So it's, it's um, you know, a unique variety that in, 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 if you're a wine lover, you definitely have to taste a lot and make sure that you understand it. Uh, I personally love Carmenere because of the, um, you know, enticing aromatics, but also the uh, kind of more medium plus tannins and uh, bright acid. So it's a wine that uh, is beautiful, youthful, but if you want to do a, a much, uh, more age-worthy variety, uh, you can definitely do so. Um, it's, a, it's, a, it's a beautiful grape to, to enjoy with a lot of, of our, our rich, diverse cuisine in, in Latin America, but also you know, in other parts of the world, um, you know, uh, any any type of meat, meat proteins and so forth. So, yeah, Carmenere, uh, beautiful, connected to the Alberta varieties. Uh, make sure that uh, you ask for it in your local wine shop or, uh, or restaurant. We uh, embrace it so much that, you know, we have a kind of different tiers of Carmenere. We have like an entry level, mid tier, high end Carmenere in our stores, but also in our wine bar, we always have a carmener by the glass because it's so important that people can, um, you know, understand it, enjoy it, uh, and get to know it. Um, so, yeah. And then in terms of um, no, uh, noticeable producers, uh, I, I pick a few that folks should definitely uh, get to know. Um, uh, these are these are uh, producers that uh, they make elegant carmineres, but they're barely correct. Um, and, and and you know, in our next slide, we're gonna see them. Um, so we have beautiful, um, um, you know, um, especially in the carmineres, specifically in in some regions that uh, do really well. Uh, just of of a few key factors about Chilean viticulture. Uh, that's super important to understand why the Carmenere thrives in, in Chile. Um, for us, uh, Carmenere is a uh, video cultural, uh, sorry, Chile paradise. So uh, you get all the uh, beautiful influential factors. You get uh, on the eastern side, you get the Andes mountain range that in Chile is a little bit more of a, it's a pendant, more like I would say 70. 90 degrees drop. So it's, it's like a wall when you see it in Chile and specifically in the viticulture area. So it's like a wall, you know, protecting them from the Argentines. <laughs> and then you go like 40 miles um, towards the West and then you find like the kind of the, the, the valley areas of, of, of Chilean viticulture. Uh, most of them are concentrating in between the city of Concepcion, that unfortunately right now uh, is going through a lot of wildfires. So we're hoping that they they stop and they, they don't have more damage to the um, to the uh, Asian vineyards over there. Uh, and then goes towards up toward uh, passing El Valle del, uh, del Maule, that's considered a central valley. It's uh, some of the oldest vines in the world you're going to find in there. And then transitioning into the uh, uh, Cachapoal, Colchagua Valley, and then sub-regions of Colchagua, Apalta, and then the Maipo Valley. Um, the Maipo Valley, Apalta, and Colchagua, uh, and Maule are considered like the premier areas for carbon air uh, due to the unique uh, microclimate. Uh, keep in mind that in Chile, you have the um, Andes, uh, Andes mountain range uh, to the eastern side. Then you get the valley, then you get La Cordillera de la Costa, the coastal uh, mountain chain. Uh, there's not, uh, the elevation is not as high, but there's pockets that it breaks 
from north to south and you have a, a break uh, from e uh, west to east. So you get all the cold air from the Pacific coast, bringing all this fog effect and colder weather during the, uh, during the uh, morning hours in the early evenings and at night. So as we all of us know, uh, the owner range plays an important role in ripening conditions for uh, these delicate varieties. Uh, it's super important that they, they get their, their sun exposure so they can thrive and develop all these aromas and, and, and intensity, but also the cooling effect is super important so they maintain it and, and, and the fruit has more precision. And then uh, our good old friend from uh, that uh, caresses the Pacific Coast from south to west, uh, we have a beautiful, uh, you know, the Humboldt current that goes from Antarctica all the way to Alaska. Uh, and there's a reason the Pacific Coast in North and South America, the water is so cold because the Humboldt current brings all that cold uh, sea current that drags, uh, obviously, all the migration of the fishes, uh, the, the you know the wildlife on on the on the shores of the of the on the Pacific coast, but also brings the cold air to to the wine regions that we love. So uh, if you've never been to Chile, um, you know uh, it's a it's a it's a beautiful country with so much diversity, so much nature, and obviously amazing wines. Uh, quality for the price point um, is it, it, amazing. And then uh, we're we're talking about with Carmen Air. Um, Maipo, Apalta, and Cochagua Valley, and, and Maule, they're within two to four hours south of Santiago de Chile, the capital. So if you're ever in Chile, you can do a lot of uh, winery visits, and uh, you can learn more about the Carmen Air variety. Um, and um, going back to what we like about Carmen Air is that we understand the past few decades with uh, wine growing, uh, uh, you know, yeah, learning curve. We have so many uh, wines from, of Carmen Air, especially the entry level that at some time were like, they were picked too early. So they have the vegetable quality that a lot of people, you know, um, us in the wine world uh, consider to be something that, uh, too green or too unripe. So um, uh, the Chileans have had uh, this learning curve to understand that the variety uh, is a late ripening variety. So it needs a little bit more hanging time than the rest of other Bordeaux varieties uh, to have more precision on the fruit, more concentration, and also um, the, uh, you will get the green aromatics of the green pepper, the bell pepper, the kind of the, uh, freshly uh, cut jalapeno notes that you break a uh, jalapeno and you kind of smell it not too close to your face because it's gonna itch a lot, but you get those uh, aromatics. Uh, but it should be there, but it shouldn't be overpowering. Uh, the fruit profile, the barrel profile, it did see some oak. Uh, Carmenere is, is more of a, a wine that is usually enjoy. Um, more uh, uh, youthful, we think within three to five years of being bottled, uh, we encourage folks to, to enjoy it because, uh, you know, it, it showcases the true expression of Carmen Air uh, and that we love. Uh, so basically, in, uh, in, in our opinion, uh, Apalta is kind of the premier subregion in Colchagua that has a, it's a, as a, as a unique microclimate that gets more of the influence of the Pacific coast still in the valley region. So it definitely warms up during the day. But you get this uniqueness of the soil composition that gives a lot of character to the wine. So uh, producers uh, like La Postol, um, that's actually a, a French uh, wine grower uh, from Bordeaux that have been making wine in Chile for for decades, uh, they produce one of the most kind of, I would say, good balance expression Carmen Air. Uh, it's called the uh, Cuvée Alexander. Um, and it comes from Apalto Vineyard. So every time you see a uh, Carmen Air from Apalta, in our opinion, it's kind of the best expression you're gonna get from, from, uh, from uh, of the Carmen Air variety because of the uh, granite and clay soils, that combination allows to, you know, good drainage, but also allows uh, the uh, the roots to kind of chew up all these uh, 
rocks and gives the wine freshness, longevity in the bottle and gives the acidity that it needs to uh, develop, uh, you know, age well in the bottle. So uh, Abalta is, is, is super unique. Um, good thing about um, in, in Chile, that they never have philosophy, as I mentioned before. So uh, you, you find some of the oldest vines in the world in Chile that are still producing, uh, bar, uh, you know, grapes uh, uh, that we have, you know, we internally here in, in, in Gran Cata, we always joke around that we, we say, we say, uh, you know, it's that Jurassic Park of vineyards because you find vines that are like 150 year old, 200 year old, even 300 year old vines in certain parts of the Maule Valley and Itata Valley. Uh, keep in mind the Spaniards when they brought the varieties um, to Chile for the first time, the Vitis vinifera, um, they introduced into uh, in the southern part. So we're talking about uh, entering through Concepcion, what is nowadays Concepcion, it was one of the initial seaports and, 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 and the body was made its way, uh, first of all, the Pais grape, that's the Listan, also known as Criolla Chica in Argentina and Mission grape in in, uh, in, uh, in Baja California uh, and in Mexico. Uh, so you have, uh, you know, this history of over 400 years of, of, of wine trees in Chile. And for a lot of people, it's still a hidden gem. And you know what we love about Carmenero that it's become like the emblematic variety uh, of Chile. It's been in Chile for uh, almost 150 years. Um, so super unique expression. Other regions to consider uh, throughout the world, as I mentioned, the Veneto region in Italy. Um, they they make some really cool, uh, super silky, barley correct Carmenero. It definitely benefits and kind of the same similar. Um, the same similar, um, you know, uh, warm days, cold nights that uh, in, you know, slow late ripening conditions. Um, and if it gets too hot, obviously you're gonna get a lot of like, um, you know, green aspect to the variety and also more jamminess to it that, uh, um, you know, uh, as a wine enthusiast, uh, we, we always like for, we look for balance uh, on the wine. So we don't wanna have a cooked fruit or we don't have a too much of a uh, underripe fruit. So the precision uh, the Chileans have learned for, for decades of producing it that, uh, you know, they understand that now it's a late harvest grape, so they have to hold it uh, most, uh, most of, of, the, of the time. Um, Something super important as well with Carmen Air that is uh, super food friendly. When we talk about uh, wine, we talk about food, food is wine, wine is food. So we always uh, uh, enjoy with our, you know, the native cuisine. I, I think that always the best pairings for all these varieties throughout the world is kind of the local cuisine, whatever people, uh, and, you know, usually, uh, usually, um, eat uh, is kind of the best pairing for the varieties that they grow in the region, especially, you know, through uh, 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 through Europe that, you know, the, it's more regulated in terms of wine production. So uh, not like the new world that you have all of these mostly French varieties planted throughout the world and, and you, you identify which work better and which soil types and regions. So noticeable producers that we like, and I, I wanna uh, give a, a shout out to more to the Casta Silva uh, producer is the uh, Los Linges Carmenere. That's a very nice central level that they do. The Los Linges is a, is a single vineyard in their property. Um, it's, it's tucked in, in the middle of the, of the Colchagua Valley towards, uh, the, uh, towards the, the, the Andes mountain range. So super unique, uh, decomposed uh, granny soils there and kind of in between sandy slash uh, clay soils that gives the, the Carmenera a more softer tannins. And they make a beautiful uh, kind of their high expression Carmenera is called the micro, uh, micro terroir. And the fun fact about this wine is that they take um, uh, three different sites of Los Linges and they vinify them and age them different, uh, separately and they age them really uh, separately. Uh, they do the fermentation aging separately and, and they'll see obviously some barrel time. Um, and then when the, uh, the winemaker um, is ready to bottle it, it's when they blend it. So it's a, it's a, it's a blend of three 
unique Carmenere uh, expression in their vineyard. So uh, it's a super cool, uh, kind of beautiful uh, expression of Carmenere. And I, I had the opportunity to visit them when I was in Chile uh, in 2019, uh, before the pandemic. And, and, uh, and I tasted the barrels separately and then how they bottle it. And, and they obviously uh, commercialized that bottling. Uh, so if you get your hands on the micro terroir, it's a wine that has, uh, I would say, 15, 20 year aging potential because of the barrel treatment and the quality of the grapes. So definitely look out for that. Uh, fun fact about um, Casa Silva, they have uh, over like 40, 60 clones of the Carmenere variety. So they have an experimental vineyard within Los Lingas that you can, they are always kind of studying the variety. So in, in my opinion, uh, they, they have like the most uh, research behind this variety and understanding of the variety because they, they, they're always experimenting uh, uh, with the, uh, with the Carmenere. They embrace it, they own it, and, and, and people love it. Other process to look for, as I mentioned, the Martino Carmenere from Maipo. I also visited them, uh, amazing producers of Italian heritage. Uh, they're making wines in the Maipo primarily, but they also make wines in, in uh, Itata Valley in, in Southern Chile. Really cool project they have there. So the Martino, I added it uh, because uh, it's that unique expression from the Maipo, but they were the first ones to ever uh, export uh, Carmenere outside of Chile. So they, they were the ones that, hey, uh, uh, this is unique. Wine lovers throughout the world should try it. Uh, when I was in the vineyard, I saw the, the bottling, they have like an atrium and it's like, oh, the first bottle of Carmenere ever exported. So the Martino, all the wines are classic Bordeaux style wines. Uh, they do make some whites as well and some kind of more, um, um, you know, historic uh, varieties that are making a comeback like, um, like Moscatelli Alejandria and Cinso, País as well. So uh, super cool uh, producer. And then I already talked about La, La Postol uh, with the Palta Vineyard. And then if you want something super unique, uh, Santa Rita makes the Pehuen Carmenere from Apalta Vineyards that in my opinion with a, with a micro terroir from Casa Silva is, is some of the best expression Carmenere you're gonna find. And I, and I included this producer because they, they have a you know, good presence in the international market. So uh, just, uh, and go to your local wine shop and see if they can source them for them if they don't carry any Carmenere. These are really cool wines. And lastly, but not least, the Bouchon family that I also visited in 2019 uh, from the Maule Valley. Uh, their Carmenere is a little more like youthful, more bistro style. So it's, it's a good introduction to the body uh, with uh, La Casa Silva Los Lingues Carmenere. Uh, so the kind of entry level price points that you can, uh, you know, start getting to on the body. Food pairings with this uh, beautiful uh, variety. Um, I obviously included some of the South American signature dishes, pastel de choclo. There's, uh, it's like uh, I would say maybe people never had. It. It's like a chipper pie, but uh, pie, but it's it's corn base has a little paste sweetness, tanginess, and spiciness to it. On the bottom, you're gonna find uh, ground beef. They call it pino in in uh, in uh, in Chile. So it's a unique uh, seasoning we're using the American spice from the Mapuche community in Southern Chile. So it's kind of goes hand in hand with uh, one of Chile, uh, Chile's, uh, uh, you know, signature cuisine. Obviously beef empanadas, it can be baked, it could be, it could be also um, um, uh, deep fried. Uh, I love Milan's Argentina, I think with a, with a, you know, breaded, uh, uh, you know, uh, beef, uh, deep fry, super toasty and elegant. And you get a little bit of mashed potatoes on the side. Uh, really good pairing as well. And then for the non -eat, uh, meat eaters, uh, I love uh, pizza de fungi, all mushroom pizza, different porcini mushrooms, shiitake mushrooms, really good cheese, and, and it's a beautiful pairing as well. And then um, some uh, vegetable quiches. So, um, you know, you have some options to do fun pairings when you're exploring this variety. Um, so yeah. That's amazing. Pedro, thank you so much. And way to end it on some food pairings. I think all of us, depending on where we are in the world, are always thinking about our opportunity for some food. Um, absolutely. This is, this has been absolutely amazing. I think we touched on some of the questions I think that are in the, 
the box there. Uh, there's a specific question here about how much Carbonara is still grown in France. If you know better than I do, say, but I believe it's less than 5% the last time that yeah, I Yeah, it, it's quite minimum. Uh, definitely the, the French that kind of hinder the modernization of, of the wine industry in terms of labeling, packing, marketing the wines. They're paying attention to their bodies, how they're doing it throughout the world. So you're starting to see uh, a little bit of common air, but I I, I I don't think 100%. It might be added to as a blending grape, as they usually do in, in, in Bordeaux uh, in the beginnings of, of the production. Um, but also like the Tanak grape that does really, uh, is the essential variety in Uruguay. I say in Madiran, they're doing 100% Tanats. And then in yeah. course as well, the Malbec. So uh, definitely uh, uh, they're planting. I think that vines are quite uh, youthful. So I, I don't think they, they're they starting to bottle something that says Carmener, as you know, they go by the, the location and the appellation. Uh, so yeah, it's not well, a lot. Utilizing it as that blend that they need to kind of add a little more body. Um, and yeah. that, just, that kind of lends into this next question, which I feel like we kind of touched on, you know, less expensive styles versus more expensive styles. And I mean, you touched it on it when you were talking about those producers. I think you said the Bouchon was a little bit more of a kind of entry level. Um, and then, uh, you know, some of the other single vineyard ones that you mentioned sound absolutely amazing. Obviously, they take a little more care and time, uh, but really some lovely, lovely recommendations there. Um, so hopefully, hopefully we've answered that question well enough for everyone. Um, there's a question here about irrigation techniques. I don't know how much you can touch on that. Um, I think generally speaking, we all know that irrigation sensitive topic, sometimes it's allowed, sometimes yeah. it's not, you know, <laughs> as you know, uh, you know, water usage in, in vineyards, um, it's an important component to maintain the cleanliness of the, of the, of the winery, but also the irrigation. In Chile, most of the Maule Valley is uh, not irrigated, so they call it secano interior, they call it it's dry farming. Uh, that I, I do love those type of wines, especially Carignan from Chile does really well in that type of conditions. But uh, uh, usually uh, in this area, in Los Lingues, when I was there, I, I saw some drip irrigation. It, you know, like uh, if mother nature doesn't give you a lot of water and, and the vines need a little bit just to get, you know, going, they, they will definitely do that drip irrigation. But at the same time, uh, as we all know, we are climate change and all these different uh, atmospheric, uh, you know, uh, things going on, like El Nino, La Nina, I guess, uh, drought. And Chile has been through a lot of drought the past decade. Uh, thankfully, like this last summer, this our winter here in the Northern Hemisphere. They have a lot of snow accumulation in the Andes, so they they, they definitely uh, all the rivers and lakes got a little more water. But it, it, it's an ongoing issue, especially in warmer areas uh, like in the southern tip of Chile and Itata, and also Casablanca Valley. They've been uh, struggling with a uh, lack of water. So, you know, uh, water is important. Carmenere is a vine that needs a little bit. Uh, 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 TLC, uh, it's like the Pinot Noir grape too, that needs a little more attention to it. Uh, and, and that's, that's uh, it's an important question, but you know, irrigation, uh, yep. it depends on the producer. Well, look, I don't want to cut everyone off, but we are trying to keep everyone on schedule here. So we have reached at the 11 o'clock hour. Any questions that we have not answered, please send them through. We will keep a note about that and try to get those answers to you. I want to thank everyone that took the time to uh, come in and see us and talk to us and listen to what we have to say. From across the globe, I have seen so many different countries pop up in that chat box, and it has been absolutely amazing. I want to thank Pedro for taking the time. You guys are busy, busy. Uh, doing all that you do. It was so wonderful to hear your knowledge on this topic. And with that, again, if anybody else wants to reach out to us, please don't hesitate to send an email or a note and we will be in touch. Thank you, everyone. Have a wonderful afternoon. Enjoy. Enjoy some Carmen Air. Thank you. Enjoy. Salud. Cuídense.